I've seen hundreds of videos on social media outlining the problem that young men are struggling. The statistics are just staggering. Four times more likely to be addicted, 12 times more likely to be incarcerated. Amen. Only half of single men are actively seeking relationships or even casual dates, according to Pew. Sex is harder for boys to flourish if their fathers aren't engaged. It's harder for men to enter occupations where there aren't men. It's harder for boys to do well at school where there are no male teachers to be seen. In recent years, there has been a noticeable shift in the decline of men's mental health. Economic shifts and a breakdown of traditional responsibilities have redefined the male identity. Issues such as mental health struggles and a lack of emotional support have come to the forefront, highlighting vulnerabilities often overlooked in discussions of male identity. Young men of today are placed under a lot of pressure to redefine their roles in a rapidly changing world. These trends underscore a complex societal landscape where the traditional male archetype faces increasing scrutiny and redefinition. In this series, we discuss common issues plaguing men today in the hopes to spread awareness. In this video, we will be discussing the future of men and giving you our honest opinion of where we see this all going, to be honest with you. you know. Uh, but before we start in this video, don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, check out our collection. We have plenty of videos up now, plenty of things for you guys to check out, different topics that we covered and everything. And let your voice be heard in the comments below. Let us know what you think about this topic. Let us know about future topics that you would like us to discuss. But in saying all that, you ready to get this thing rolling, Jordan? Let's do it, man. Let's do it. What would you say is the future of men in this society? Um, it's ever changing. Um, I think there's certain things that are fundamental and rooted in, in, in society as it is that will forever hold constant, but it is ever changing. But I want to kind of break this down from a macro level to a micro level. So um, from a macro level, I think we need to see systemic level changes in action. So again, you know, increase in accessibility to mental health care and, you know, in terms of affordability. And, you know, one of the mediums for that is, you know, insurance company coverage and therapy and psychiatric services as well. So, and then, uh, you know, policies, you know, better funding for, you know, further psychological research is one of the things that we talk about within the structure of my program that I'm attending is longitudinal studies that may span years. So for a better understanding of long-term implications and outcomes. So all those things from a systemic level, are important to continue to advance this um, in terms of outcomes that we see um, in, the, in the future. And then from the work and school perspective, um, educator in school, so maybe even seeing some yearly mandated psychoeducation and mental health training and seminars. Um, I think there has been an increase in seeing like school-based clinics um, with, you know, and making sure that these educators have um, access to the mental health trends within the school. So what is the actual things that are occurring, what are the hot spots that need to be touched on um, to let them know, the, the let the teachers and the educators and the administration know and get a handle and get a pulse on what it is that students are dealing with. And then creating a culture that denounces discriminations and promotes unity through expressing, you know, being expressive in different manners. So um, through student life organizations, um, young men groups, I think I'm a big proponent of, particularly at a young age. So those things can be done and implemented in the education system. From a work perspective for, for young adults, I mean, establishing and nurturing an inclusive, transparent environment um, within the workplace. So whether that's conversations, whether that's um, camaraderie through retreats, mentorship programs, and then, you know, increased PTO. I know we see that for a lot of these newer jobs and then mental health days are been, being implemented. So I think that's the right direction to go. And then keeping a pulse of things. So getting feedback from employees, what are employees currently going through and dealing with in, how can you know companies be a supportive asset um, to their employees in that? And then from a micro level, what can the general population do as a, you know on an individual basis is time to you know continue to do the things that have been done, which is encouraging men to be open and encouraging you know vulnerability. However, there's a caveat to that, and that's to be patient with men. I mean, this is we're you know reworking a lot of things that have been grained for millennials, so this will take time for. Um, a lot of men to be comfortable with. So, you know, you're confronting something that, you know, when we talk about vulnerability, when we talk about it being expressive with feelings um, that run, you know, completely contrast to, you know, the central component of the male identity, rather, you know, you know, a la 
toughness and then being able to say, OK, we'll express grief now. Yeah? Those two are contrasting things. So although I understand the role that men have played in this, you know, this stage of barriers that we're continuing to you know, overcome, um, these things have now turned out to be detrimental over time. One of the things that we even alluded to in our first episode back in 2022 um, is understanding where we are today and how we end up getting here. But um, being expressed through different ways. So I think important thing to even note here is that some people may be vocal. It may be written for some people in terms of men that's being expressive, right? Some may choose to be colorful in their expression like I am very much colorful about my emotions. And some may be of a few words, but understanding that all manners of expression should be encouraged. And then the last thing is stigma reduction, right? Continue media exposure, continue open dialogues that we have been seeing, um, whether that's through commercial or whether that's through podcasts like ourselves. So continue to push that, you know, that envelope and find creative ways of bolstering morale amongst men. Not all of these things have to be such doom and gloom, heavy conversation written um, type of ideologies or type of mediums or exposure for mental health services. But, you know, just continuing to push the envelope in terms of camaraderie amongst men and get them to have uh, engagement through activities to create a culture that's much more conducive to getting to where we want to get and to, you know, undo some of the negative outcomes that, you know, may be imminent in terms of mental health. What, what I would say for the men, for sure, uh, they're there's so much stuff going on in the news right now. So many articles you can read and just like where young men are at and the scary future of men with something I heard of earlier called the lonely epidemic of men. Right. And how you know, loneliness is just spread along through the younger generations, but definitely for men. And what does that mean? And how dangerous men are today. And, you know, they need structure. They need that. You know, everyone has their thing. Right. So, I think it's very easy for people our age to really receive that doom and gloom that we're getting fed. And, and for a lot of reasons, you and you can even see it. You see a lot of men that are just giving up, right? Just accepting the bare minimum, just trying to get through in life. No real guidance, no real uh, need to progress or anything in that nature. So to these types of men, that maybe just so happen to click on our video, which thanks, don't forget to like, but the people who just so happen to click on our video, what is your advice to them to say like, hey, like no matter what you're hearing out there, you know, the economy, maybe there's a potential war, whatever's going on, right? You still have a life to live and you still have a life where you can create meaning and have purpose, right? So what would you say is your advice for the men that to motivate them to be more optimistic about the future and what your options are in front of you? Um, I think the, the one thing that comes to mind when you phrase that question is um, adaptability. Um, and that's pretty much just leaning into the world and how it's changing and how it's remaining the same in certain, you know, certain aspects. I know a lot of what was portrayed in the media is like you said the doom and gloom like you said um the potential war and like the loneliness epi epidemic and all these negative things that you know again are that may be imminent for us but the thing of it is is that we are the authors of this chapter particularly for our generation and so leaning into being adaptable you know adaptable um in in this climate is really really important and understanding that you know we can contribute to um, a, a different future than what is being fed to us. Um, one of the things that I, I see a lot when we talk about lack of purpose or kind of giving up is just, again, going back to perpetuating, you know, negative narratives or negative stereotypes against men or the things that we kind of internalize um, and don't really process in, in a proper manner. You know, that thing is just a, a sense of hopelessness and of not you know learned helplessness as well and so for those men that may be struggling or you know click on this video and they don't know where to go with it or they're like yo it just seems to be no point in all of these things that y'all are touching on there is a point um because collectively we can rewrite um our future through um encouraging one another you know creating a space where 
every one of us as men feel valued to what we bring to the table. And that's different aspects, you know, whether it's the talker, whether it's the thinker, whether it's the planner, whether it's, it's the people that are a little bit more hands on. Everybody has a role in society. One of the things that we even talk about on this podcast is being, you know, a part of the change and not the change itself. So collectively, that's how we get to the end goal of a better society for men. So in terms of encouragement, I think just to be, you know, cautiously optimistic about life, you know what I'm saying? Understand to to take it as it comes, to deal with it as it comes to you and do the best in that manner, but also to put in the back end work on how do I contribute to the future and what I want for us to be as a society and the role that men will play in society and to get into these places that we wanted to be and sustaining um, a level of humanity and restoring humanity and communal um, places that I believe that is the root of our existence. So just lean into adaptability and for, you know, more than ever is just lean on your brother, lean into what is coming and take it as it comes, process it and encourage those around you to take, you know, bare arms and in, in this fight that we have ahead of us. Absolutely. I agree with all that. And what I would like to add is personally for me, and I always deal more of the logical side, but uh, my advice to anyone viewing this is that uh, I look at it as perspective. So I enjoy history, Jordan, you enjoy history, but we peel back the times of history. Every generation has had their own struggles, has had their own things going on. Every generation, well, not every, but a lot of generations have had to deal with war. They've had to deal with a bad economy. They've had to deal with even the global pandemic on a few generations, right? And I say that to say, you look back at those times, those people didn't know what the future held. But in hindsight, you look back and it's like, okay, well, the generation after that, it was better. And then the generation after that was better. So that resiliency that no matter what was going on during that time, the next generation was always prospering tells you what you need to know about what's going on now is that as long as you have the resiliency to say like no matter what's going on i have a goal in my life i have a goal of what i would like to see around me and i'm willing to do what it takes to get there that's going to go a long way and then the second thing i will add to that is um people only look at the negative but we also try to point out a lot of the positives I'm telling you right now, when our parents or our grandparents were growing up, the amount of young adults right now that are becoming overnight millionaires have has never been heard of and has never even been close. The closest they'll ever get to that during their time was the lottery, right? Things like that just don't happen. Nowadays, a couple viral videos is, is life-changing. And you see it every single day of what it can do. And, and we can name a bunch of them. If, if we started naming them now, by the time we would post this, there'd be another 10 people who have life-changing uh, opportunity because they went viral, right? So in thinking of the negative, right? Because there's a lot of things going on that hasn't happened yet. You know, we throw in AI and a bunch of other things. But let's also focus on the positive that there is so much of an advantage to be a young adult now with everything that's in front of us. And all it takes is a little bit of resiliency and some effort. And you can shoot for the moon at this point. So that 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 would be my advice. It's like, uh, it's easy to only think about the now and only focus on what's going on right now. But every generation has had their own struggle and has something they had to deal with. And then more importantly, you know, think about the positives as well. Think of all the good things that we have in this world that you can take advantage of and use to your advantage while you're young, while you have energy, while you have maybe maybe some responsibilities, but it's not the end of the road for you. You can still bounce back. There's still ways that you can fix things. So I, I, I would recommend um, any viewer, you know, definitely stick to the bright side, stay optimistic and Right now, the whole world is open to you. You can do whatever you want to do right now. While we focus on men's mental health, we at Men the Podcast would like to express that this advice can be applied to all people. 
whoever you are and wherever you are. We hope that this information can help you overcome the struggles in your life. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the other videos on our channel. And as always, take care and we'll see you in the next one.